Welcome to this service at Faith and Victory Church. This is the place to come to receive your miracle from God. Now, let's join our service already in progress. 2 Corinthians chapter 8. Uh, the, eight, the eighth chapter and the first 15 verses of chapter 9 are our foundation text for what we're teaching on here. And we're teaching on pro- the covenant of prosperity. Amen? Moreover, brethren, we do you that to wit or to know the grace of God bestowed on the churches of Macedonia, how that in great trial of affliction the abundance of their joy and their deep poverty abounded unto the riches of their liberality. For to their power I bear record, yea, and beyond their power they were willing of themselves, praying us with much entreaty that you, we would receive the gift and take upon us the fellowship of the ministry to the saints. Now what they were doing, they were taking up a collection. And the churches in Macedonia had, even when, when they didn't have enough, went ahead to, had been committed to a big offering. Because they wanted to. They wanted to help. Remember, the saints in Jerusalem were being persecuted strongly. They were, they, I mean, they were, you know... Um, and some people take this to try to bring communism into the church. But, you know, the truth is, in, in the book of Acts, when the people and uh, the Jews became Christians, they were disowned. They were disinherited. They were counted as dead. They had nothing. Their families took everything. And they, in some cases, had funerals for their pe- children because they said they were dead to them. They had nothing. Everybody say nothing. So it began, that's when, when the, the, the disciples began to receive the collections Remember that? And um, and I Sapphire came in and lied, and they fell dead, that kind of stuff. Um, don't lie to the Holy Ghost. Just saying. <clears throat> but um, this word spread around, and, and, and over the years following this, there was great persecution, and there was a great, in some places there was just a, a tremendous poverty to people who once had, had, had wealth. Well, the, church of Ma- the churches in Macedonia, the region of Macedonia, had committed to take up an offering. And that's what this is, Paul's talking about here. Um, they they uh, received the gift. That gift was the offering, all right? And take upon us the fellowship of the ministry of the saints. And this we, they did, not as we hoped, but first they gave their own selves to the Lord and then to us by the will of God. Inasmuch we desired Titus that as he had begun, so he would also finish in you the same grace also. Now here the word grace is in a reference to um, a gift not unmerited favor. Um, okay? It, it, the word grace can mean the token or proof of grace, the benefit, a gift of grace, a benefit, or a bounty. All right? Not just limited to favor. All right, moving right along here. Therein, as you, as you are bound in everything, in faith and, and utterance and in knowledge and in all diligence and in your love towards, to us, see that you are bound in this bounty or grace also. In other words, uh, the, the uh, Church of Macedonia had promised one thing, they were coming up short. For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for her, your sakes he became poor, that through his poverty ye might be rich. And herein I give my advice, for this is expedient for you, who have begun before not only to do, but also to forward a year ago. They had made this promise about a year ago. Hallelujah. Now, therefore, perform the doing of it, as there is a readiness to will, so there may be a performance also out of that which you have. Now, don't make commitments you can't make, you can't fulfill. And that's kind of what Paul's telling them here. You promise, now come through with it. Why? Because others count on it. Amen? Now, they did it willingly. They didn't do it under pressure. See, I, that's one thing I don't like about some of these uh, fundraising schemes where they come into your church. Where I had one tell me, we won't come unless you need a half a million dollars. What if I just need $300,000 to get the job done? We won't even come raise the money unless you need a half a million. Why? Because they get the first 10%. They get $50,000. And they come for about six to eight weeks, and they come in, and they, you know, and they send their guy in. He trains your people on how to go pound on people and get them to make commitments. Now, here's the deal. If you only get 100000 they get the first 50000 they, they get the first 10%. It's not a matter of, you know, we'll pay you the 50% as it all comes in. No, they get the upfront 10%. I don't believe in that. I don't believe in strong-arming people into giving. I present, we present the need. We say, this is what we need. If you can give to it, if your heart, see, if your heart purpose is to do it, we're not going to show up at your house, ask you how much you have in the bank, and can you give X number of dollars. We're not going to do it. 
I said, we're not going to do it. What do we do? We'll rent until Jesus comes back if you can't give. You have to want to do it out of your heart. Be, why? Because I, and I, and I tell you this, I have seen so many people leave churches who were involved in that because they couldn't make their commitment because they were strong on to it and they felt so bad they just went somewhere else. But the company that came in got their 50 grand. We're not going to do it. Here, the church, here, the churches in Macedonia committed to give. They wanted to give. Now, Paul said, now look, since you committed, you wanted to, we need for you to come through with it. All right? They weren't strong on they, they could have chosen not to. All right? Um, for there, there be, um, now therefore perform the doing of it, that there may be a readiness of will, so that there may be a performance also out of that which you have. For if there be a willing mind, it is accepted according to the man hath, and not according to the hath not. In other words, you don't commit beyond what you have. I've seen people get on television. Make a thousand dollar vow. Send in your thousand dollars. And show everybody getting the house paid off. They don't have a thousand. I'll make the vow. You'll get the money. It's got to be a matter of, of, of your faith and what you have and not what you have not. Amen. And that's one thing. If God speaks to you and says, Debbie, go give the church $10,000. Lord, I don't have it. I'll make it up. You give it. That's God speaking to her in private. It's nothing to be coming and meet with Debbie and Lord at their house saying, now look, I need for you to give 10 grand. I don't care if you've got to sell off your car. I don't care if you've got to get into your, you know, your retirement. Whatever you've got to do, we need $10,000 out of you. Twist, twist, twist. I mean, don't you love God? Don't you love the church? Don't you believe in the things of God? Twist, twist, twist. And after enough pressure, she goes, okay, okay, okay. I'll give the 10000 uh, Lloyd said, bye-bye. Barbara Lloyd, throw me out of the house. Get out of my house. Sit the Pomeranians on me. <laughs> yip, 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 yip. All right. <laughs> I'm saying the lab wouldn't do anything. <laughs> a lot of Pomeranians be standing there guard at the door. Yip, 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 yip. All right. See, if, I come to, if we come and do that to Debbie under that kind of pressure, what, the, what, what is she not acting in? Faith. There's no faith involved. And whatever you do, do it in faith. What is not a faith is sin. You can give in sin because you didn't give in faith. You gave under pressure. You gave because you were manipulated. See? And Paul's saying here, don't make it a matter of what you don't have. Make it a matter of what you do have. Be, and be a willing. Be a willing. It has to be willing. Okay? For I mean not that other men be uh, ease and ye be burdened. Hello? But by an equality that now at this time your abundance may be a supply for their want and their abundance also may be a supply for your want that there may be an equality. What's he saying? Well, let me, let me read the next verse. Um, As it is written, he that hath gathered much had nothing over, he that gathered little had no lack. But thanks be to God which put the same earnest care into the heart of Titus for you. Now, what's he saying? He's saying, look, right now you got extra. And there's people over here in the church who don't have enough. So right now, your abundance can take care of them. But let me tell you, there's going to come a time you have want, and they're going to have abundance, and they're going to take care of you. Amen? That the church is going to take care of each other. Amen? Amen? I mean, these, these ministers are running around saying, preach, give up, give up, give up to the higher anointing. It's amazing how they're living in million, multi-million dollar houses, having five cars, $25,000 guard dogs, flying in private jets, going all over the country teaching this, and the people are not getting there. All the people that are giving to the higher anointing aren't living in the multi-million dollar houses, aren't driving the five cars, don't have a $25,000 guard dog, don't have a private jet. They're all just giving to that higher anointing, quote, unquote. I think if you're doing all that, you're living in abundance. So when are you going to start giving back down to those who don't have right now? You know, you could take and take, you could build, you could build us a church and pay cash for it. But they want us as a church to give to them. We're, see, this is not what Paul preached. Paul did not preach that you run around and gather up all the money and live, live seriously while, the, while churches are going under without having enough money. That's not the way the Bible works. Hello? It's okay to have a budget. God wants you to prosper. That's what we're talking about our covenant. We have a covenant of prosperity. But God has a way that it works. And it works by us taking care of each other. It's not about somebody coming up with some doctrine, the higher anointing. 
That's what a lot of the prosperity preachers do. Look, I, I'm one of them. I came out, of, I'm in the, in the same circles. I'm a rhema guy. I'm a word of faith guy. I'm an old Pentecostal too. But you know, I mean, we, we, we understand. We, we, we use the same scriptures. But when it becomes self-serving, and others are going under and lacking because they're so busy making sure you have, as the higher anointing, your pools of money. When one guy said he got $25,000 pushed in his pocket and he didn't even preach, something's wrong. I said, something's wrong. Why didn't you get $25,000 to a missionary on the mission field who's, who's uh, drinking, who, who's got to filter everything he drinks because the water's so bad, and he, he has to call people and say, oh, we need money to buy a filtration system. You're flying around telling everybody they're going to be rich overnight if you'll give to me. This is not what Paul preached. I said, this is not what the word teaches. God does want us to prosper. God wants us to have money in the church. But he wants us so that we can take care of the church and then take care of reaching the nations. It is not about you being crazy rich and living in that, that kind of lifestyle, um, you know, so that you can't drive anything but a Cadillac when you come preach. Don't pick me up in no little car. Pick me up. You can go rent a Lincoln Town car or a Cadillac. Don't come pick me up nothing else. I don't sit in nothing else. Well, I'll tell you what. Why don't you get on the highway and stick your thumb up and see if you make it to church on time. If you don't, we'll take out the offering for the church. Hello. As it, so he says here, um, but it, by inequality, that but now at this time your abundance may be a supply for their want, that their abundance also may be a supply for your want, that there may be equality. So Paul makes it clear that we, we take care of the church. It is not about pools of money to make individuals rich. It's about taking care of the church and reaching people with the gospel. Somebody say amen. See, people don't like it. They, 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 our word of faith people, sometimes we just get crazy. If it just isn't all about us and us having everything and us this and us that, we just act crazy. We've lost sight of the fact that, for though, that through his, he, became, he was rich, but because he was rich, he became poor so that his poverty, you might be rich. He laid down what he had so he could take care of, of, the, of, of the church, of people. Amen. He became obedient even unto the death of the cross. Who what? For the joy that was set before him. Amen. It, it means that the church is here to help people not build personal kingdoms. I'm tired of personal kingdoms. Amen. I'm tired of hearing about people's hand-tailored suits and hand-tailored shoes and now they're living in super prosperity and I'm watching pastors and they don't have enough to get by and they've done everything they told them to do. They gave them, they gave them all the offerings. They did everything they said to do. Stuffed the offerings in their pockets. Put their churches under giving money to the higher anointing. And they struggle just to get by while they, while they live. It's not right. It's not the way God intended it. Hello. People tied into the television preacher and they're sitting right there in the church and not giving anything to it. I was, I was on one of the television programs one time that somebody called in. I see my tithe here and my tithe there and I'm like, well, where do you go to church? You don't send your tithe all over the planet. You know? And, and, and they don't go to church because they don't, they, they, they don't like any of the churches. I'm like, what are you talking about? There's good churches in here, in this area. You don't have to just sit there and watch somebody on television and send them your money. If you want to send a special offer, fine. You need to be tithing to a local church. Why? Because when you get sick, I'm going to tell you something. Unless you're a million, a $10,000 a month giver, they ain't coming to see you. They're not even sending a staff member out. And they call you at 11 o'clock at night or 1 o'clock in the morning and say, Mama's in the hospital. They're not flying in. Who is? Pastor Ed's getting out of bed, putting his clothes on, and driving over to the hospital. Hello? Why? Because you need your pastor. You need somebody there. Amen? 
We've got to get back to understanding that the prosperity is about, you know, it's about reaching the local community. We've got to reach people in the local community. We need churches to be able to do that. Amen. I wasn't going to say any of that this morning. I just kind of got down there and it came out. As it is written, he has gathered, he that gathered much had nothing over. He that gathered little had no lack. But thanks be to God, which put the same earnest care into the heart of Titus for you. For indeed, he, ex he accepted the exhortation that being more forward of his own account, he went unto you. Um, in other words, he, 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 kept, he cared more about them than his own, own self. For indeed, uh, I'm sorry, and we have sent him with the, brother, with the brother whose praise is in the gospel throughout all the churches. Not only that, but who has also chosen the churches to travel with us, uh, travel with us with this grace, this bounty, the money, which is administered by us to the glory of the Lord, the same declaration of ready mind. Avoiding this, no man should blame us in this abundance which is administered by us. Providing for honest things, not only in the sight of God, but also in the sight of men. We've sent them uh, w with them our brother whom we, we have oftentimes proved diligent in many things but now much more diligent upon the great confidence which I have in you whether any do inquire of Titus he is my partner and fellow helper concerning you or our brethren be inquired of they are messengers of the churches and of the glory of Christ wherefore show unto them and to all the churches the proof of your love and boasting on our behalf they say he's basically giving credentials to the people he's Titus and the group is sending to him they're coming, on, they're coming as a messenger from me. All right? For it's touching the ministry to the saints and the superfluous for me to write. You know, they're talking about taking care of them financially. For I know the forwardness of your mind, for which I boast of you unto them in Macedonia and Achaia, was ready a year ago, and your zeal hath provoked very many. Yet I have sent brethren, lest our boasting of you be in vain on this behalf, that as I said, you may be ready. Now what happened here was, he started going around telling everybody, hey, the church is over mass and done. Man, they are, they are loading it up. And everybody said, hey, all right. If they, if they can get through this place and help take care of the saints, we're going to help take care of the saints too. Now Paul's saying, those guys are going to do this. I hope when they get there, they do have what they said they were going to give. All right. So they're coming to make sure that they weren't just running their mouth. We had a lady a number of years ago, she, she, she called me up one day, <laughs> and uh, she was in the church that we were in, and she had supposedly covered the $12 million, and she was going to give us a big offering. Couldn't find that, it was all a lie. Going to give us like a half a million dollars for the ministry. She was going to tithe to, to the local church there in, in Greenville, but she was going to give us like a half a million dollars because she loved us and loved our ministry and da 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 She didn't have anything. It was all a lie. I said it was all a lie. Then I've had other people, you know, well, I had, a, I had an automobile accident. I have a, um, a, a settlement coming, and we're going to tithe. And before the settlement got here, they left the church <clears throat> and took the tithe somewhere else. You know, and all that. You can't, so you can't count. Paul will say, I'm not going to count my chickens before they hatch. I'm going to make sure you got, well, when I show up, we're going to make sure you did what you said you're going to do. Because he, he was, um, yet I have sent the brethren, lest our boasting of you be in vain in this behalf, that as I said, ye may be ready. Lest happily, if they have Macedonia come with me and find you unprepared, that we, that we say not ye, should be ashamed of this same, in other words, same confident boasting. In other words, we may be made, we're going to be made to look like fools because we went and told everybody you were doing this and we got there, you didn't have anything. Therefore, I thought it necessary to exhort the brethren that they would go before you and make up beforehand your bounty, whereof you've noticed before that the same might be ready as a matter of bounty and not of covetousness. In other words, a gift, finances. But this I say, we got to stop somewhere in here. He that soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly. He that soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. Every man, as he purposes in his heart, let him give, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to make all grace abound toward you, that ye always have an all sufficiency in all things may abound to every good work. Thank God for that. Amen. As it is written, he dispersed abroad, he's given to the poor, his righteousness remains forever. Now he that ministers seed to the sower, both minister bread for your food and multiply your seed sown and increase the fruits of your righteousness. Being rich in everything unto all bountifulness, all bountifulness, which causes through us thanksgiving of, to God. For the administration of this service not only supplieth the, uh, the one of the saints, but is abundant also to many thanksgiving 
unto God. Whilst the experiment of this ministration, they glorify God for your professed subjection unto the gospel of Christ and for your liberal distribution unto them and unto all men and by their prayer for you, which long after you exceedingly great, uh, um, for the exceeding grace of God into you, thanks be to God for un unspeakable gifts. So we both chapters here. <clears throat> this is talking about an offering they were taking up. Amen? And they were going to bless people with it. And they were going to help the church. And they were going to minister to the church. And uh, Debbie, you write 10, T-E-N, thousand, T-H-O-U-S-A-N-D. You can just leave that right here on the front row when you leave today. All right. Huh? It'll bounce. Well, it will. Hallelujah. And we can't have that. I'm messing on them now. Hallelujah. It's Larry, 10,000. We're just going around the church. We find somebody say they're going to do it. Hallelujah. So he's talking about giving the offering. He's talking about it's a, it's a bounty. He's talking about, the, the, so in other words, the, the prosperity of the church is there not so you can pull great amounts of money for your lascivious lifestyle. It's so that we can help people. We are called to help people. Say called to help people. That's our call. That's our ministry. That's what we're supposed to do. Amen. God doesn't expect you to be broken, living in, you know, living under Eeyore's tent. How many of you ever seen Eeyore? He's under the stick. It's a good tent. No matter. I'm getting wet. Oh, well. No matter. <clears throat> Tear comes pouncing by and breaks the stick. <laughs> now, in faith, we should be like Tigger. We should never be like Eeyore. Hallelujah. We trust that you were blessed by the Word of God and the flow of the Spirit of God in this service. If you would like to contact us, please write us via email at office at fbc.org or using our mailing address, P.O. Box 7752, Greensboro, North Carolina, 27417. If you would like to contribute to our ministry, please go to our website at www.fbc.org and click on the Giving Online button. Thank you, and may God richly bless you for your giving.